Hello, it's Jeannie. How are you? I'm very glad you're here. I hope you're doing well. Today's video is one where I address something that I get a lot of emails and questions about, and that is starting a YouTube channel. Um, I get a lot of emails from women in my age group, and I don't want to say old, but I will say older. And I've gotten a couple from some young people too, so it's not all us older folks. But the question is, should you start a YouTube channel? And if so, when? And how to do it? And what do you think? And, you know, I've always wanted to, but I'm afraid to. So I'm going to address some of those things and how to get started, okay? Because I am not the tech master. I am not the um, technology answer person. But I can help you with a couple of things and hopefully enough to just get you going to start, okay? So I'm going to talk to you about a few things that you may need and we'll go over that and how to progress from each of those things. And I'm going to start with the first thing you need is being able to see, which brings me to today's sponsor, GlassesUSA.com. One of the things I love about GlassesUSA.com, because they start at just $39, I am able to take my prescription and put it into several pairs of glasses and accessorize with them according to what I'm wearing or according to my mood. Now let me show you my latest three pair that I think are so cool. These are Bolson Browns. And the, the reason I like these is because they are a nice full frame. You see that? And these I've been wearing everywhere. They're, they've just got a wonderful kind of a grayish tan, um, grayish tan taupe colored um, frame. And I love these. So these are the Bolson Browns. The next pair, which I think are really groovy, are the Amelia E. Denise's. Look at these. And I have these in a yellow tint. Look at that. Why? Because on days where I'm driving and it's there's a lot of gray, but I don't want sunglasses, I like this yellow tint. And then, see that? Ooh, look at that. And then the last pair are Muse, matte in kind of an orange, and these are my sunglasses that I wear with me when I drive or I'm out walking around on a sunny day. Look at how cute these are. Oh my goodness, I love these. I love these. Oh. Today's video is sponsored by GlassesUSA.com and I'm very grateful to them. Their mission is to change the way we purchase glasses and it's now from the convenience of our own homes. And they offer a wide variety of high quality frames and lenses at economical prices with risk-free shopping and like I said, starting at just $39. By cutting out the middleman, GlassesUSA.com offers prescription lenses that are up to 70% off retail prices. They offer over 4,000 styles of glasses, sunglasses, including in-house brands like Muse and Amelia E., and designer brands like Ray-Ban and Armani and Gucci and many, many more. And you can add any type of prescription to almost any pair of frames, including sunglasses, which is 
what I love because I can take these on vacation with me and be outside reading my books by the lounge, you know, by the pool in a lounge chair. So make sure to click on the link in the description box and in the pinned comment for the coupon code, which is awesome. GlassesUSA.com has a virtual mirror and a live try-on for you to try on any pair of frames and see what they look like on your face live. So shopping with GlassesUSA.com is risk-free shopping experience with free shipping and returns, 100% money back guaranteed within 14 days, delivery, no questions asked, and it comes with a 365-day product warranty. Check out the GlassesUSA.com link in the description below and in the pinned comment. Thank you so much to GlassesUSA.com for um, sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. So, I've got a favorite pair of mine on that I keep up here in my studio. And this is the pair I'll wear today. Like I said, I get a lot of questions about starting a YouTube channel. I am not the complete and all in terms of answering everything. But I think I know enough to help you get started if that's what you want to do. This video should give you enough to go by. And remember, as you do more and more, as you make more and more videos, um, you get better and better at it and you start to determine what it is you need and where you do want to improve. We, I'm still imp trying to improve as well, every day, every video. And, but it's something that you build on and grow on. So don't think you're gonna jump into this and just know it all. You're gonna make mistakes, you're going to, um, you know, have to try things out. You're gonna have to take a risk. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to list out what I think you need and I will list it in the description. So if you miss it, you don't have to keep re-watching it. And I'll give you a summary again at the end and hopefully I haven't f forgotten anything. I've made some notes, but like I said, I am not the end-all, end-all person for this, but you know what? I've made a channel that works. You're here, right? So why, it, you know, why can't you do it? There's no reason why you can't. So let's get into it. All right. I'm going to put my notes right here in front so I can refer to them. One of the things I would start off asking you is why? Why do you want to start a channel? Why do you want to make videos? And that answer is varied, of course, according to each person. Um, is it a form of expression? Do you want to be use this platform to express yourself with something? Artwork or whatever? Um, do you have a creative flair that you want to show others? Um, do you want to help others? You know how to do something and you want to be able to show that, um, what, whatever it is you do. Uh, do you want to create an income? Do you want to make this channel a business? And you can, I'll talk a little bit about that coming up. Or you've seen someone else do it and you've thought, I can do that, okay? So just, you know what, as you start, keep notes, keep a little journal, and it may shift. Some of these answers may change over time, but it's interesting to look back, all right? Now, do you have a niche? I want you to ask yourself that. For me, obviously, it's ASMR. And for me, within ASMR, it is also mostly soft-spoken. 
once in a while I'll do a whisper. Um, once in a while I'll be silly and bring on the Countess, just because that's my creative side. She's wacky, um, but she's fun, right? And if you haven't seen the Countess, you've got to go find her in some of my old videos. Um, but there are other subcategories of ASMR, like tapping or uh, scratching, you know, on different things. And I like that too. Or crinkles. There's that fast ASMR. I've never done that. I've never tried it. I think. I don't know if I could do it. Sometimes I get really fast with my talking. I have to force myself to slow down. Um, there's mouth sounds. There's, I mean, all kinds of stuff. So just remember, there's an audience for everything. And it's you have to figure out what your niche is and who your audience is. So ask yourself, who do I want to be watching me? Okay. Now. I'm going to give you some ideas here on what you need to start. But remember, this can change as you grow. And I am not the end all in the answers. This is from my perspective, kind of an older woman, non-techie. Okay. So, but remember, if I can do it, you can do it. I promise you that. So the first thing is timing. The best time to start a channel. Best time of the year, best month, best week, best day of the week. There is none. There is none. What are you waiting for? You can start tomorrow. You can start today if you want. Um, you don't have to wait to be ready. You don't need a whole bunch of stuff video things and monitors and the right camera. You don't need all that to get going. The first thing you need, number one, and you can start with your phone, something to record with. And typically for most people, that is their phone, an iPhone or what's the other one, Android or whatever else there is, and or a camera that you have at home, something that you can get your video off of to upload to YouTube. And we'll go into that. So your phone. Most phones have cameras and I will task you with learning how to work the video part of it. Okay. Learn your lighting, learn your sound, learn the distance, learn, you know, where to prop it up, where you look best. You don't look best looking down like this and, you know, um, you want it pretty much eye level. I know several YouTube artists, creators, who are still on their phones, using their phones as their main source of recording. And they are doing very well. There's this one darling Russian gal that I follow. Her name is Victoria. I'll put her name right here because I don't think I can say her last name. But she only uses her cell phone. Okay? And she knocks it out of the ballpark every video. I mean, she's got like 230,000 followers, subscribers on her channel. And so there's no excuse you know, for her, she doesn't stop because she doesn't have the right camera. She uses her phone. So you can too. And it's a great way to practice. You can stick your phone anywhere and just start talking to it. All right. You might delete 12 to get one. It's okay. That's okay. Sit down with your camera, your phone, Look at the lens, not the screen, because that is how you connect. You have to tune out that there's a picture of you there. You're not talking to the picture. Now, you will see me turn sometimes and look. I just want to make sure I'm centered, that I'm in focus, although my camera's auto-focus 
mostly. Um, but you want to remember your audience is right there. Okay? Right there, way deep down in that lens, not on the sides. And that is really hard to get used to. So I just imagine when I'm doing this that I am talking to you and I see you way in there. Okay? Now, that's just my first tip. But you can start right now, today, tomorrow, with your phone. And don't be afraid. Okay? Now, if you're ready to up, upgrade to the next level in cameras, you don't have to go to the three, four thousand dollar level. I would love to, but you know, that's just for me where I am right now. It doesn't make sense. Maybe someday if you can afford it, great, go do it. But I needed to be more budget conscious. I just didn't want to go spend thousands of dollars on a camera. And so the one I did get is kind of known as a vlogger camera, and it is the Sony ZV-1. Sony ZV-1. And you can buy it just as the camera itself, or you can get the vlogger kit, where it comes with a little, um, what do you call that thing? It's like a tripod and a selfie stick, and you can walk around. Now, the thing I love about this camera is it's around in the $700 range. All right, so that so far has been my priciest expense all right, in setting up my YouTube channel. That's it, 700 and something dollars. But I started with my cell phone. Um, it Everything is auto set. I don't like sitting and fidgeting and learning you know, this, that, that. And you can with this if you want, but I just wanted plug and play. I just want to turn it on and go, hello, here I am. <laughs> okay. I don't want complicated. And the ZV-1, the Sony ZV-1 is so not complicated. It has auto everything. So if I show you something like this pen, see, it's got good zoom I fuzz out in the background and it, you know, sometimes you have to do that because it's trying to find my face. All right, so that is my recommendation. And I know another YouTuber, Lori, uh, Travel Tips by Lori. She's another pilot wife like me. And she's got an amazing channel. And she uses the same camera. So... You know, if it's good enough for somebody who's got hundreds of thousands of followers, it's good enough for you and me. Okay, now, when I bought this camera, something else I bought that is wonderful and you will need is extra SD cards. You see that? And this is, whoops high capacity. This is a 256 gigabyte. And it can hold lots of videos on this. The one the ZV-1 comes with is smaller and you'll use it up more quickly. And so get extra um, SD cards. Storage disks? Is that what SD stands for? Another thing that I bought that you will need are extra batteries because each battery lasts about an hour and that depends on how hot it is or how warm it is when it gets hot it uses the battery up faster and then it just dies right in the middle of your sentence and that has happened so many times so i bought three extra batteries and a battery charger so i've always got a charged battery and before I sit down and do any videos I pop in a fresh battery. If you don't do that, you have once it dies you have to wait for it to recharge and that could be a couple hours. So get extra batteries. 
That's a pro tip. <laughs> okay, so next on my note. All right, a microphone. Most everything, uh, all these cameras and phones have built-in microphones, but with regard to what I do, particularly with ASMR, I wanted an external microphone and um, just for a little bit better sound, all right? Not absolutely necessary, but in ASMR, eh, it's getting there. The first microphone I bought was this Rode, R-O-D-E, off Amazon for about $42, $43. Let me show you. See? And this can actually go on top of my camera and so this comes with a little wind screen and so if you're outside you put this on and it helps buffer the blowing sound of the wind <laughs> see so i have it off right now because i'm actually experimenting what that sounds like usually i have it on whoops even here in my studio so to recap real quick, camera, start with your phone, and then you can upgrade as you feel fit. Extra batteries and battery charger, um, SD cards that fit your camera, and the ZD1, a ZV1 is just this regular size. Um, a microphone, and now let's talk about lighting. Now, you may find a perfect place by a window or in a room that has great lighting. I don't have that. Um, it's not that. So, the first kind of lighting that I had was these. Just these gooseneck lamps. And I had them all around my desk, like maybe four of them, three or four of them around my desk. You can buy those for five to ten dollars at Target or Walmart or any store like that. And if it is too bright, you can diffuse it by putting a sock over it, like that, because this doesn't have any dials to make it brighter or dimmer. Now, Daryl, Maria, gentle whispering, uh, her husband, taught me something good. He said, if you're going to use socks, make sure they're clean so that they don't start to stink up the room <laughs> when, when they're heated up by the light. So use clean socks. Or you can just find a piece of fabric, lightweight fabric, to put over them as well. And um, just to help get away some of that sharpness. A lot of people, and they're cheap too, have ring lights like this. And I'm going to tell you, I never personally, this is just a personal thing with ring lights. I don't like the round reflection in my eyes. I just don't like the round light. <laughs> That's it. So um, I just didn't want that. They make you look good because it's a nice, you know, circle light. But if that's what you want to use, use that. Now, I actually found that one at a second, uh, second-hand shop. I was walking by and I saw it in the window and it was like, I don't know, five dollars, maybe ten, not more than ten. I thought, what the heck? So I bought it. With all of these things, Check out the second-hand market, Facebook Marketplace, or any place, uh, thrift shops, charity shops. Go in and look and see what they have. Here's another kind of light that I use. Again, just a, it's nice because it's a gooseneck, and you can, you know, adjust it. This one actually did have some adjustments. And it goes from cool white to warm light. And I like warm light. 
the nice thing about lighting for me is it makes my skin look amazing. Okay, I won't lie. People say, Janie, you look so radiant. It's the lighting. Honest, honest, honest. I am blessed with good skin. But the lighting, you don't see a lot of my spots. Age spots, I'm sorry, it's what they are. You don't see a lot of my wrinkles. Okay, I've got what they call smoker's lines, but I never smoked. What is that from? Talking, whistling, sucking a straw? I don't know. But the lights do my skin a lot of favors. All right, it's true. And I like the warm light. It's just warmer, it's softer, and it does make my skin radiate. So much so that I have to keep, and I always forget to do this, some powder to put on my nose and cheeks to kind of soften some of that glare that is coming off my face. So makeup. I don't have that on my list, but makeup. <laughs> Um, and I actually do have a little thing here with lipstick, um, some blush, uh, eyebrow pencil, a little extra mascara, whatever it is you use. Okay, I'm not going into that. All right, so where were we? Lighting. Now I have lighting that our floor stands on tall tripods. They were off Amazon. They were maybe, well, maybe $20 each. Not bad at all. Let me, I'm gonna grab one and show you. Oh, see? See that? Get all readjusted here. And those are nice because they're portable, whereas the other ones were clamp on to my, to my desk, my table here. And these are nice that I can move them around if I need. So again, not expensive, not expensive, but I do appreciate how they make me look. Don't I look fantastic? I'm doing a Lori lot. Okay, tripods are great, various tripods, uh, something to put your phone in or your camera in, the lights on, so tripods. Now these lights that I have came with the tripods, which is fantastic. Um, I used to use books, stacked books, to just put my phone on. So halfway through a video, you'd, you know, it'd be a crash. Bell. Um, now, you need, if you're going to be using a camera with an SD card or something like that, you need a laptop or a desktop computer, I think, to put that onto and use that to send to YouTube, your account with YouTube. Um, We'll talk about editing in a minute, but you do need a Google account, okay, with YouTube, and think about what you want your name to be, the name of your channel. I'm Jeannie B, ASMR. You could be anything you want it to be, but remember, it isn't written in stone, and you can change that down the line if you wish, okay? When you set up your Google account, um, do a new email. Don't mix your personal email with your YouTube channel email because, you know, when people want to write to you, you want it separated out. As you grow, your email box fills up with lots and lots of email. So it keeps it simpler that you can focus on. All right. 
um, let's see. When you upload your video to YouTube, it'll ask you lots of questions. Is this made for kids? I always say no because it's not geared towards children. It's not that they couldn't watch it. I never have controversial topics, but it's an easier answer and my, my, um, my audience is adults in my mind. Although I have some wonderful teens on this channel. I love you guys. I love hearing from you. You, you say, I want to be like you when I'm older. I want to be like you when I grow up. Um, anyway, answer all those questions. And then it, YouTube, the uploading software that they use will pick out a thumbnail for you if you want and typically they're pretty good but you could also upload a photo of your own so if you want to you know the, the picture you want to upload for your thumbnail that people see you know is this um, you can upload it at that time all right I'm not giving you the tech skills for this. You but it's it's not undoable, trust me. And you need a Wi-Fi and or a strong internet. Where we used to live in California, out in the country, we had eleven beautiful acres, big beautiful home, but the Wi-Fi was made of molasses. And it would take me, I would start it at night, the upload to YouTube. And it would take me until the next morning to get a, a video, 30, 40, 45 minutes, uploaded. It was so slow. And um, it was frustrating. I used to drive down to Sacramento area to one of the kids' house and spend a couple hours there hanging out with them and doing my uploading then just to make things faster. It was crazy. So, you need some kind of carrier. Okay. <clears throat> Editing software. You may need to edit out airplanes, yard, you know, yard people, mowing and blowing, loud trucks, garbage trucks, um, sneezes, coughs, people knocking at your door, all these things. You stop and start. The software that I use to edit my videos is iMovie, and that is free with Mac, um, Apple products. It's on my phone, it's on my desktop, it's on my laptop. I don't know what the software is for non-Apple products, so that's for you to figure out. But there must be something free and it's easy to Google or search, all right? I do have Final Cut Pro, but I haven't learned how to use it yet. It's like iMovie on steroids. I bought the book Final Cut Pro for dummies, but I haven't even picked it up yet, so. And basically what you're doing is cutting out the accidents or the, you know, misspoken words and stitching them back together and you can add a nice little fuzzy transition or, you know, you can play around with it. It's not hard to use. Some people edit straight from their phone. You know, they have a video and there's iMovie right on their phone. Anyway, I, I need it bigger. I need to do, I like it on my laptop and I do it downstairs and on the sofa with one of my cats usually helping me. So, editing. Now, something else that I use, and I didn't start this till later, was a green screen. Okay? Not necessary. If you want to use a big drape of fabric, that's fine. Uh, you can change that out, which is really nice. Or you can just use a wall with something, you know, decorative that isn't screaming for attention. Um, 
You know, you can use just a black background, whatever you want. You don't need green screen. The thing about a green screen is you can replace it with an image. So everything that is green is taken out and the picture that you upload is what it's replaced with. So if I were wearing a green top, I would turn into whatever, I, this would disappear and I'd turn into my picture. And um, or so dark things will, and that can be a little tricky. If I hold up something dark, and I'm gonna show you without any adjustment what happens. If it's dark, it kind of picks up whatever background I've chosen, all right? Um, let's see. Now, something else to think about. If you have music playing, you need to be aware that there are copyright strikes if you use music that you don't have licensing for. I've gotten warnings for having music on um, that is not my music. And this protects the artists. That's fine. You know, why should I be able to use something you wrote and something you have out there, you know, and monetize my channel, perhaps, with your music, and you get nothing or no credit for it. So there are places, there are subscription services that you can subscribe to where you do get to use their music, download their music, um, download pictures, things like that, but they extend the license to you for a fee. And you can do where it's per picture or per song, or you could do just a yearly subscription, which is what I do. And I think that was the one I pay for is Artlist, uh, um, Artlist, just like it sounds, A-R-T-L-I-S-T dot I-O. And I think I pay $100 a year, maybe 150 and it, it's automatic, so I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's under $200 but I'm not going to get a copyright strike. You don't want strikes on your channel, okay? You want to be good, clean, honest, wholesome, and legal. And same thing with pictures. You can't just take somebody's picture um, that, for instance, like Getty photos, you know, you see the watermark. You can't take that and edit that out and use it. So use photos that you've taken or subscribe to a service where you can use their photos for a fee like Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. So those are two tips. Okay, pro tips. Um, <clears throat> it would be great if I had a soundproof studio, but most people do not have that. They have noises, trucks, tractors, like I said, yard yard people out there, husbands, wives making noise. You just go with the flow. Sometimes I'll just pause and wait. Okay, the garbage truck went by. I can start again. If you've got kids and pets, they'll know when you're filming. And they will make themselves known. They like to just kind of, what are you doing? My cats do. They want to come in and be a part of it. And sometimes it's fine and sometimes it's not. But go with the flow. Don't expect to have a perfectly soundproof place. As long as you can find a quiet, well-lit corner, you're good. Um, now, uh, it takes patience to grow a channel. You start and you have zero subscribers. Well, one, you subscribe to your own channel and maybe a spouse or a partner or a brother or a sister. I didn't tell anybody, anybody that I had started my channel. Only my husband. And then a few months down the line, I told my grandson, who was the one who urged me in the first place, Anyway, I, want, I did that because I wanted it to grow completely organically without friends and family, you know, liking and watching and boosting. And, you know, I wanted it to be just me and my channel. And I remember when I got to 10, I was so excited. 
I just thought, I've made it. I'm at 10 subscribers. And then I got to 100. And for me, that was wonderful. I was like triple digits. Okay, here's the thing. And I'm going to give you this piece of information. Be grateful for every single one you have at any given time. Look at it as a success. Okay, now you need to be patient because occasionally YouTube will purge your channel of what it thinks might be bots. You know, bot. And I don't even understand how that all works. But if they think a, a follower might be a bot, and I don't know how they tell, don't ask me, they may take that out or people unsubscribe. It happens. So you're in the beginning, you might be at 100 and then it goes down to 95. It's like, oh my God, that's 5%. But then as you grow, you know, it should look like this. Okay, and you know your channel is healthy if it's growing, okay? It's, people are subscribing because they like you. So my, tip, my advice to you is be grateful for every little goal that you hit in subscriber count. 10, 50, 100, 500, 1,000, and beyond, okay? Now, we'll talk about monetizing your channel um, and what you need for that, okay? But let's talk about something called the algorithm. I call it Uncle Al because, anyway, it's almost unknowable to someone like me. It's complicated and very in-depth, but I'm going to break it down to what I think is simple. You make a video, and let's say it's about watch repair, okay? You know how to fix a watch uh, that has a problem. You fix it, boom. You've got a video all about fixing that watch with that problem. You title it correctly, fixing a watch with a broken second hand or whatever that is, and you upload it to YouTube. It's out there. It's out there in the world. If I have been Googling watch repairs for broken second hands, I'm on YouTube now. YouTube knows what I've been Googling. They may think, hmm, this is a good match for Jeannie, all right? And they may have a suggestion, and there's your video on my feed page, hmm. okay, along with others. You have a little more competition when you're newer, you know, you're not, um, you're not known, you may or may not show up, but, you know, there you are. I click on you, I watch it, Oh, wow, I got my solution on how to fix that watch. I like it, and I subscribe. So the Uncle Al algorithm says, Oh, that was a good suggestion. So since Jeannie liked it, I'll bet Joe and Martha and Sue and Ed and everybody, these certain people who have also Googled watch repairs will like it as well. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Now, do you think... Your, ad, your uh, movie, your video, is going to show up on somebody who has been looking for diapers or playground sets or cars, new cars. You see, the algorithm is looking to feed what you, are, you have been searching or someone has been searching. And you know it when you start doing searches on you know, um, pretty vulgar face powder. Guess what's going to start showing up on all your feeds everywhere? Face powders, right? So it knows. It knows. And it may or may not suggest your video. 
Now, if I watch a bunch of those videos that you've put out all about watch repair, but now I'm kind of tired of you, and I, you know, it's like, okay, I've gotten my fill of you, I'm not going to be clicking on your videos anymore. And that tells Uncle Al, mm, maybe the watchmaker is stale with his or her content. All right? So maybe you need to change up what you do instead of watch repair. Now you're going to talk about watch bands or, the, you know, whatever. You see my idea here? There are a lot of things to talk about with regard to watches. But you got to stay interesting or people lose interest in you. They stop clicking on you and they're thinking, oh, I get the same old, same old thing. Every time I click on that, I don't need to click on you anymore. So keep it interesting. Keep it fresh. I try. <laughs> people keep clicking, but sometimes you make videos that no one, well, I shouldn't say no one, that don't have as great of reviews or clicks as others. And you could title them exactly the same. You never know. You never know. So you just have to be patient with that. Keep putting stuff out there. Just don't stop. Keep putting stuff out there. If people keep not clicking on your videos, you need to change your content. I saw a video the other day. This gal was, she does a lot of consultations for people in business and social media. And she said, people not clicking on your videos? Maybe you're boring. <laughs> Maybe you're boring. And I thought, wow, that's, that's powerful. That packs a punch. But it's true. Maybe I need to change something. Okay? Be open. Be open to pivoting with your content. Just because you start off with watch, watch repair doesn't mean you won't eventually talk about earrings or whatever else, okay? Learn how to promote yourself. Um, you know, start a, maybe an Instagram or Facebook page that is dedicated to your channel and, and you know, start promoting yourself. You're, you're number one everything at this point. Okay, um... In order to monetize, you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch time hours. All right? So a minimum of 1,000 subscribers. So that's your first financial goal. And 4,000 watch time hours. Now, you may think that 4,000 is crazy. I mean, like a huge number. But it isn't. And I'll tell you something, I hit the 4,000 watch time hours before I hit the 1,000 subscribers. So, there you go. You never know. Once you do hit those, you're going to fill out the, kind of the partner program, and it's through AdSense, A-D-S-E-N-S-E, -S -S -E, AdSense. And you give them your tax ID number, your address, your mailing address, you know, all that stuff. And once they approve you and, you know, get you into the system, now you can be paid for every view. How much are you paid? It depends. And you don't get to set your rates for that. Let's say I'm a young mom and I've got a channel about all things kids. That would be an excellent channel for me as an advertiser to put diapers, an ad of diapers, or, I don't know, baby vitamins, or, you know, um, toddler clothes, or, you know, whatever little kids need anymore. Um, that would be perfect for me to place that by your channel because you have a following probably of other young moms or young families. And so for me to put an ad of, say, um, you know, a Maserati might not be appropriate. So there are, there are advertisers who look at specific channels and try to match. They'll tell AdSense or, you know, YouTube, I want to be on her channel. 
and her channel and his channel and his channel because my product is perfect at the beginning or at the end. You have no control over who is before you or after you. And you can't turn that off. Okay? I don't see ads when I'm on YouTube because I pay the premium, I don't know, what is it, 10 bucks a month? You know, I hate the, you know, that you get done with a, um, a nice relaxing, you know, video and then boom, hey everybody, now it's time to buy this thing, blah, blah, blah. I don't like that. So I turned it off by paying. I pay not to have, you know, those loud, obnoxious commercials because you have no choice who they are. Does that make sense? I hope so. That's in a nutshell. That's as much as I know in this world about all that. Okay. Now, if your numbers continue to go up and you have lots of stats in the what's called the YouTube studio, you'll see your numbers, you see your count, your subscriber count, you can see all your analytics. You know, usually they're like this. When they, particular, particularly your count is going up, you may attract sponsors. Like, say, I have glassesusa.com, right? But let's, but in the very beginning, it may be somebody saying, hey, I have a product for you. Would you, if I send it to you, would you be willing to just review it? So that's kind of the entry into, you know, um, sponsored ads. So they send you this thing, not this, and they ask you to review it. So you've gotten a free product as, as your payment. As your ads uh, um, viewership continues to go up, they may offer you a certain amount of money for product um, sponsorship for you to talk about and endorse their product. I do that, um, and I'm very picky, I think, on who I say yes to. I love, you know, things like glassesusa.com. I just do. How can I not? Um, but I do say no to probably more than I say yes to. Now, I also have an agency, so I don't negotiate my fees. My agent will send me an email, hey, so-and-so is interested, here's what they will pay, um, here's what they want, 90 seconds, and, you know, she gives me the information about it, and I think about it, and it's like, yes or no, that's it. I always give more than 90 seconds just because if I like something, I like it and I really want to share it. So that's me, but that's a different topic. So that's kind of how sponsorship works. How much you're paid um, will depend on how big your channel is and how much you can command because of how big it is. I'm going to be different than, um, say, a huge... ASMR artist, you know, I'm here and somebody else is here. I'm going to be paid less. It's pretty good, but, you know, it depends on how big your channel is and how powerful your channel is. But just know that that is out there. And there are other ways to monetize that you can get into later. But that's not really the topic of this. Okay. It's just start. Start making videos. Start learning how to sit down and do this and see yourself and edit yourself and, you know, hear yourself. At first, it's like, oh, I don't like looking at myself. You know, get over it because you're the product that you have to work on. Um, keep an ongoing list of all your ideas because you will forget. I've been driving and I've thought about really fun ideas or good ideas, but I didn't write them down right away or as soon as I stopped. And I forgot what it was, you know, that big brainstorm. 
So I keep a list on my phone and then I transfer it to my planner just because I like to check things off. Some ideas grow and some ideas fizzle. That's okay. That's the nature of the beast. And, you know, just try it. If you don't like a video that you've posted, you can take it down later. You can put it to private. I have videos out there that I do not like that I did. I, I loathe them. Or I've got lipstick on my teeth. But they're favorites of others. I've tried putting them on private and I get emails. I get bombarded with emails. Where's that video? That's my go-to video. <sighs> okay, you know, you never know. So I put it back to public. But if it's really stinky, you can take it down. You don't have to keep old rotten videos up. But sometimes the old videos are your best. Maria, gentle whispering, I love her old stuff. Many people do. They're comforting in their lo-fi technology. And she used her phone, okay? And look where she is now. So don't worry about technology. Don't worry about it being lower quality. Sometimes that's exactly what people want. Okay. Ah. Once you know your genre, don't be afraid to reach out to others in that genre. Send them an email or, you know, just reach out. Maybe they'll answer back. Maybe they won't. Don't hold it against them if they're a large channel and they don't reach out to you. It's overwhelming sometimes to have a large channel. I'm 112,000 something. That's great. I'm happy. But sometimes it's overwhelming. So I can only imagine, and I've talked with Maria about this, you know, the, qua the quantity of what's coming at her. And it's overwhelming, so you may not get an answer back. But if you go with somebody who's a mid-range, you know, they will answer you back. If you're a watchmaker or a watch repair person, reach out to others like that. I have been so happy to help others and give them my advice. Um, sometimes it's solicit solicited, sometimes it's not. That's how I met Lori Latte. I sent her a message and said, girl, I need to tell you something. And I did. And it's like, oh, she might hate me. She didn't. She thanked me. And that was our bond. And so we're super close now. But there are a lot of people in my genre now. We are such great friends. And we communicate and share and help one another. All right? So don't be afraid to reach out to others in your genre and don't hold it against them if they don't answer back. Um, you need to develop a thick skin sometimes. Um, people, when they comment, sometimes can be critical and there are trolls, 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 they mean little trolls, um, who can tell me where that came from? 10 points if you can. Trolls? Trolls? There are trolls out there and they love nothing better than stirring the pot and eliciting a reaction out of you. And it's sad, but it's a fact. I'm so grateful I don't have many on my channel. Very few. Once in a while. What you do with those is delete them immediately. Just delete them. I've talked to some people who leave them up just to show others. And, you know, when you have a really great community, it's fun to watch them ugh, pounce on the troll, you know. Um, but I don't want drama on my channel. I delete them right away. And then you have those who are just critical. If I um, do a whisper video, somebody may say, oh, I don't like when you whisper don't watch the video. It clearly says in the title, this is whispers. You know, but they have to tell you what they don't like about what you just did. And it's kind of, you know, 
Anyway, what am I going to do? Go back and delete it because the one in 500 didn't like it? No. So that has made me much aware, much more aware of what I comment on someone else, uh, on someone else's video. I'm not going to be critical on, because first of all, the video's done. A lot of people did tell me that something had changed with my sound. And it's because I had gone to a Blue Yeti, which I thought was the goal that everybody, you know, ASMR wanted to use in terms of a microphone. And so many do. But for me and my viewers, they didn't like that. So I went back to my $42 little, hello little guy. My little road, my little macro, micro road. And that's what works for me. But I listened to that. And the way it was delivered was not, Hey, Jeannie, your sound sucks. It was, did you change your microphone? You sounded a little different here. You know, it was, it was very helpful and done in a loving way. So think about that, okay? All right. But number one about that is don't engage with trolls. They just love it when you do, and that's where they get their power. Okay, Maria said something really important. When people say mean things on their comments, in their comments to you, oh man, this is like mind-blowing. It was one of those, pff, Maria, love you girl, thank you for this. They don't necessarily mean to be mean. They may not be trying to be mean. They think they're helping. So sometimes you have to give them a pass and just let it go. Okay? Okay, now. Even on large, large channels, the creators of that channel read every comment, even if they aren't able to heart every comment or answer every comment. There is a human being behind the channel. Okay? Maybe more than one, but they're reading everything and they're feeling everything that you say. So be kind. Be kind. Okay, so a quick synopsis and it'll be in the description of this video and I know there's a lot more this isn't the end all number one start just start don't wait for the perfect time don't wait for the perfect everything to line up just sit down and start recording that's where you start learning okay trust me on that um, the things you need, kind of, your phone, something to record you with, and then you can graduate to a camera of, you know, like I said, I like the Sony ZV-1, extra disc, yeah, um, storage discs for that, and extra batteries and a charger uh, for those batteries. Um, Lighting, and again, you don't have to spend a lot on lighting. Just these little, you know, just these little desk lamps work. Uh, lighting, you need an internet, you know, some place to be able to upload it to YouTube. You need the Google account and um, name your channel, uh, editing software, unless you are so good you can sit down and do it in one take, tell me how you do that. If you want to get, you know, nifty and get a green screen, you know, and do et more editing, great. Everything is on YouTube that you need to know. If you have a question, Google it. And, or, or search it in YouTube. My husband used to watch tons of John Deere, um, 
you know, videos on his new implements or repairing something, it's on there. There's a thousand videos for everything you need. So the lighting, tripods, um, and this is going to be important, I'll tell you. A mirror. Have a mirror nearby. Do you know how many times I've started a video and I glance at the mirror and I oh, I have lipstick all over my teeth. Or, you know, my hair sticking up, or whatever. Um, let's see. And patience. And most important of all, a willingness to try. A willingness to just do it. Okay? I know you can. I know so many gals and a couple guys who have started channels. And, you know... And that used to email me, I want to do this, but I'm scared. Feel the fear and do it anyway. You know, just do it. Don't worry about being perfect and pretty. Okay? All right. That's enough for today. I hope that is a good synopsis for you to get going. All right? It, um, it doesn't have to be super expensive look at charity shops, you know, and uh, secondhand shops, marketplace, things like that. Uh, it's your creativity, but most of all, it's, it's this people want. Somehow in my videos, every time I'm looking right there, I'm seeing you, and I am trying to relay who I am and my heart and my spirit to you. Even the trolls. Trolls, trolls, trolls. Okay? All right. I bid you peace. I bid you wellness and love and a sense of adventure to just Please let me know. Please let me know in the comments if this is something you're going to do. Send me an email or put it in the comments and um, I will watch you. Yep. So, take care my friends and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye for now. <laughs>